Hey guys, Coach Pillowfist here, and today we're going to be talking about the High Guard. Special thanks to the member Fadley for requesting this video. So the High Guard is a boxing stance in which both of your hands are kind of a little higher up, about eyebrow level. So a big advantage of using the High Guard is that it minimizes openings for the opponent to hit you up top because it forms like a secure barrier around your head. And another thing is that when you guys are practicing in the High Guard all the time, you know, it's forming your muscle memory of keeping your hands up right here, right? And that's a big problem with people that use like the Philly shell. So people that only use the Philly shell when they're in trouble in a fight, maybe they're tired or they got rocked, they only know how to use the Philly shell, right? But with a stance like a Philly shell, you gotta have extremely fast reflexes. When you're under heavy pressure or you get tired, your reflexes are gonna slow down drastically. So a lot of these prospects, when they use the Philly shell, when they're tired or they're under heavy pressure, a lot of the times they get stopped or they get knocked out. So let's name off some examples of this. I mean, you got Carlos Barberas when he fought up against uh, Rene Diaz Hiron, Chris Colbert when he fought against Hector Luis Garcia, Anthony Yard when he fought up against uh, Sergey Kovalev, or Marcus Brown when he fought John Pascal. Or remember when Floyd Mayweather fought Sugar Shane Mosley? What happened in that second round? Floyd Mayweather got stunned by that right hand. So what did he do? He adjusted. He said screw the shoulder roll. He got into the high guard and then he went on to win the fight. So that's why it's important to have that high guard in your back pocket in case you need it. Whether it's your primary stance or not. So another advantage of using the high guard is you're able to get inside a little safer without having to worry purely on your head movement and reflexes. So now let's go over some cons of using the high guard. So the first con is that it limits your peripheral vision because your hands up by your face right here so it's kind of blocking my peripherals the next thing is that people can get too comfortable with using that high guard and they think that it's just gonna defend them from everything because they got their hands up by their face but you don't want to get into that habit you still got to be moving your head catching punches and throwing jabs and then the last con is that it leaves your body a little bit more exposed because you got your hands up a little higher so you got to sacrifice some of that body coverage so a good thing to consider when you're using the high guard is you're using a tall stance in the high guard and then you can faint lower simple level change can bring their guard down low and then you come up with a straight onto the head just like that all right so I'm, a, I'm in my tall high guard faint or vice versa I can be aiming my jab up high all right focus their attention up high and then come up low with that straight all right now here are three don'ts and three do's for the high guard let's start off with the don'ts first all right so these are the things that you should not do so the first thing that you should not do is to sit in the high guard and not be catching and parrying punches or or moving your head all right think of the blocking as the last line of defense all right so the next don't is that you don't want to be hunching over when you're in the high guard because it leaves your body wide open on both sides right and it also leaves my head wide open to hit that to to get hit by an uppercut. And the third thing that you should not do is over protecting your head and neglecting your body. By having our hands up high in the high guard, we're sacrificing a little bit of body coverage, right? Your body is just important as your head. So you need to make sure that you're blocking, you know, shots to the body, being just as aware of your body as you are with your head. All right, so here are three things that you should do in the high guard. The first is head movement, all right? So make sure that you're moving your head, still fainting, all right? The next thing that you should do in the high guard is to go to the body, all right? Because since our hands are up here, use that to our advantage to focus attention up top and then go to the body when you can. The last thing that you should do in the high guard is counter punch. So here are five ways to counter from the high guard. So one is catching and parrying the straight shots. Next is if he's throwing body jabs and straights to the body, you can deflect with my elbow and come back with a hook. Just like that. All right, so now if they're throwing uppercuts at you, you can catch them and come back with a hook. Just like that. Come back with a hook. Just like that. All right, so the third one is if he's throwing hooks to the body, he'll throw a hook to the body, what's open right here, all right? It's an uppercut straight up to the chin. It doesn't have to be a powerful one, you just shoot it straight up in there. Just like that, all right? Other side, just like that. All right, now last but not least, the pullback counter. Oh, my bad. All right, same thing if I want to do a check hook, right? I can do the same thing. All right, everybody, thank you guys for tuning into that video. I hope this helps you guys understand the high guard a little more. If you have any questions, please comment down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys on the next one.